Okay, welcome to part two of this tutorial series. Um, in this video, we're going to be coding these three functions that we defined in the previous part, and then hopefully moving on to the sign up page and the uh, send mail page, and well, ultimately the unsubscribe page, which will be tutorial over. Um, that'll probably take two or three more parts, so stick with it, and we'll end up with, you know, the end. <laughs> um, so, well, this we're going to start with this add user function. Um, what this function needs to do is basically take these three parameters and then insert them into their appropriate database columns. Um, it's fairly sort of trivial in a way. Um, obviously the first thing that we need to do is um, apply proper escaping. We can do that using the MySQL real escape string function. So we're not going to use capitals. Um, so what this will do is we'll append a backward slash to any MySQL special characters, um, and then it will set that equal to back to the variable. That makes sense. So, so it's escaping this and then setting it equal to itself, which is fine. You can do that. Um, if you don't know what this function is for or why I'm doing it, um, it's to well, it's pr to prevent SQL injection. But more importantly, um, if you have magic quotes on, um, this will cause quite a few problems. Um, I explain those in my SQL injection video. So you can go and watch that. It's in the security playlist on my channel. So head over there and do that. Um, I'm just going to copy this down two times because we want to apply escape the escaping to both of the other parameters. Um, so the other one is the last name. Last name without two T's. Oh, actually, I've just seen that. That should be name like that. Um, this should, this third one would be the email, and over here as well, email. Okay, so now we have the escaped safe data. We can um, use it in a query. So we're going to perform this query using the MySQL query function. The query is going to be a simple insert. So an insert into table name, which was users, list of columns. Um, the columns are the first name last name and email I think that's right, yep and then we need to specify the values using the values function um, and these values are going to be three strings, I'm going to add the quotes uh, and the first string parameter value, whatever you want to call it is the first name variable, so let's just add that in here uh, yep, looks good um, second one is the last name variable uh, yeah, that also looks good. And the final one is just the email. Better. Right. So, uh, that should now be inserting these three parameters into these three columns. Um, but what, what we want to do is have this function return false or true, depending on if the um, insert has failed or succeeded. Um, one reason it might fail, which, which is we're going to assume if it fails later on, you'll I'll get to that later, is if the user tries to insert a new email address that's already in the table, then it, the query will fail because of the unique key that we set up on the email address. So we want to return true if this doesn't fail. So what we're going to do is just assign this to a variable like so. I mean, you could use the sort of return on this line directly, but it'd look quite messy, so I'm just not, not going to do that here. Um, you can just then return ternary operator again, so return when um, result well, t is not equal to false, which means the query hasn't failed, we want to return true, and when it is equal to false, we want to return false. Uh, so what we're doing is checking this variable against false. If it's not false, we return true, because that means it's succeeded. If it is false, we return false. Okay, so let's move on to the remove user function. Um, this is by far the simplest. Um, what this is going to do is, well, as usual, it's going to escape the email address. So I'm just going to copy this line down here, like so. Uh, I don't need to have that tab there this anyway, so that's that, and then we just need to perform a simple query, which is MySQL query delete from table um, where email equals string, and that string is the escaped email input. 
So that's that function complete. What that will do is delete the row in the table where the email is the one we give it, basically. So it removes an email address. Probably should do this remove email, but never mind. Now, the mail all function is sort of the main part of this. I think I've already explained it. It wraps around PHP's mail function. So what we can do um, is select the first name and the email from email address from the user table, and then send use the mail function to send an email to all of those uh, users. So the first thing we need to do is do the query to get the um, user information. So I'm going to set that users variable equal to MySQL query of select first name and then the email. I'm not actually using the last name in this. I just added it because of that sort of a standard parameter. I mean, you might not want that at all, so you just leave that out of your database. Um, we're selecting from the users table. Oops, highlight it, save. So what we want to do now is loop over this query result, doing something for each row, basically. I explained this before, so again, if you don't understand, go back and watch some of my earlier videos. Okay, so in this um, loop, we have user equals MySQL fetch a sock of the user's query result. And while that is not equal to false, we want to do something. Because basically this query query will return false um, when it fails, when it gets to the end of the table and then tries to get the next row. So that's the point we want to stop. <laughs> okay, so in here what we want to do is define a new variable which is going to be the body, which is the actual email message that we're going to be sending to the user. Um, and that's just going to be um, equal to a string. It's quite short. It's going to be hi then the name, which is um, in the oops, the user array now, user first name. Because if you remember, um, this user variable, oops, this user variable here is equal to an array of um, basically each sort of column, the, that specific row's value for each column. So all makes sense in a moment. So we have high username, high first name even. And then we're going to have two new lines, sort of two enter, two line breaks. And then we're going to have the message. Uh, message, like so. Whoops, no. Um, message, right? Um, and then we're going to have following that two more new lines. Just remember this, whoops, this message is what we pass to the function, so it's what we type in the text area. So this is going to have hi, their name. Then between sort of four new lines in the middle, um, it's going to have the message we type in. Um, and then following that, I'm just going to have this unsubscribe link. Unsubscribe, and I'll just I'll leave this blank for now. Whoops, not delete it. Leave it blank for now, uh, and we'll add that in at a later date because the unsubscribe link um, is something we're going to talk about later. So okay, once we've defined this body variable, we just want to send it to the user basically. So we use PHP's mail function. Mailed, mail. And um, the first parameter, I think I've already explained this, is the email address you want to send it to, which is email. Oh, sorry, user email. Like so. The second parameter is the subject, which is the one we entered. Like that. The fourth, third parameter even, is the body that you want to send, which is the body we've just defined, which sort of incorporates our message. And then the final one is just headers, which we're going to be sort of passing through this function. So you can see how this kind of wraps around the mail function now. It's basically mail to all, so yeah, that's that. Okay, so that's that function complete and defined. Um, we can now move on to our sign up page. Uh, I'm just going to reload this to check for syntax errors, of which there are none, which is good. But you see at the moment this form does basically nothing. So let's just go to our sign up page. Um, there's quite a bit of error checking here, but um, I'm not going to sort of go into too much detail about it. I'll explain what's going on, but I won't sort of, well, I won't talk about it too much. Okay, so when the user sub uh, clicks the submit button on this form, we want to process that up here and then display any messages here inside the HTML section. So up here, what we're going to first going to do is check for the form submission. So we're going to do if is set 
post first name post last name and post oops email oh yeah let's type so that will check if all of the form fields have been sent basically um, those these correspond to the names so we have first name first name last name and email okay so if all of these have been um, sort of sent we're going to define an errors array which is going to ho uh, hold all of the sort of errors that may occur we're going to check a lot of well we're going to check th three or four conditions and, and add an error to the errors array if any of those conditions fail so the first two are basically the same check we need to ensure that the um, username the user's name that they enter first name and last name um, only contains letters and it's not zero characters in length. Um, the way we're going to do that is using a regular expression. Um, there are a couple of ways. I think PHP has like a C type function or something, but we're going to use a regular expression because well, we just are. There's no reason really. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is use the preg match p r e g underscore match. So if p reg match um, okay well this function will perform a regular expression match I'm not going to explain regular expressions here because I'm going to do a basics video on it at some point um, so if you don't understand what they are just sort of well I don't want you to I don't I don't want to encourage you just to copy it down and go with it um, I'd rather you sort of understand what was going on so watch my basics video when it's uploaded if you're watching this in the future then it probably is already so basically what this does is um, briefly okay what a regular expression is is sort of a string of characters that match a pattern of a string not an actual string so we can sort of match a group of letters or a group of numbers for example but what we're going to be doing is just matching letters um, anyway this preg match function takes two parameters the first is the matching string which I'll sort of write in in a moment and the second is the uh, variable or string that you want to match with so in this case it's going to be post first name um, and this function will return the number of matches so we want to check it against zero because zero means it hasn't matched at all and then in that case we want to add an error um, and that error is going to go into the errors array added to the end and it's just going to be your first name should contain okay should be letters only should be should contain we'll go with contain okay so that's that okay uh, I'll just briefly explain this regular expression for the preg for family of functions they have to be delimited which means they need a character that is unique um, to the expression or you can escape them if you need this character um, at the end and at the start so they're there um, and then inside what we're going to do is use the whatever this is called followed by dollar sign and what this will mean is sort of this will match the start of the string and then this will match the end of the string so it'll, ma it'll, it'll only work if this whole string is letters basically um, and then in there we're going to add a character class which is den den uh, sort of denoted by these square brackets um, and then I'm just going to do um, sorry I'm just going to add a z a to z in there like that what that will mean is it'll match all letters A to Z basically the alphabet and then the after that we need a sort of quantifier which is going to be a plus which just means um, it's going to match sort of one or more characters and then after that uh, after this final forward slash we need an I which just makes the whole thing case insensitive okay so I'm going to end this part here and then in the next part we'll test this out and move on to the um, other validation Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in part 3 or 2 or 1 or whatever part's next.